Hey, welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm about to take all of this off. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I lost. As you can see, right down the middle, someone got me. Actually, many people got me. As you can see, I got a horizontal stripe, a vertical stripe, and someone even left this. Oh, I can't win them all. Wait, well, let's talk about some games, huh? We've got Rainbow, which is by Mito Suzuki. It is a climbing shedding game where you you don't quite have to climb at all, and you don't quite have to shed at all. It's wild. And then we have Prey, which is by Toru2. And this is great. You roll two dice. You have to hit one of those numbers in tricks, but you have mitigation, hand mitigation, in a way. You have double-sided cards. And your cards flip halfway through the hand. Absolutely wild. And of course, oh, art by the amazing Sai Bapu. Ah, oh, all play gave me these copies, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, but let's go to the table and teach you how to play Prey and Rainbow. And before we go and cover these games, I just want to say again, tip of the hat to Sai Bapu, who did just a wonderful, wonderful job. All right, let's go to the table. The deck in Rainbow is one through six, but there's 10 copies of each card. Here we have the game set up for four players. So no matter the player count, you're gonna deal one card to the center here per player and arrange it from highest to lowest. If there's ever the same, you'll just put them next to each other. So here we have four for the four players and it's lowest all the way up to the highest. And then at four players, everyone's gonna get 14 cards. It changes per player count. You'll just check the table in the rules. And also three players has it to where you're actually gonna deal 14 cards out. And then two players has its own separate variant on the back of the rules, which I'll leave you to find out on your own. The last person to see a rainbow is going to lead, let's say it's Ponyta over here. This is a climbing shedding game in a way. You'll see how it breaks the mold in a variety of ways here in a little bit. But so when the person leads to the first trick, they can play a single, a run of any length, and sets of any length. So maybe if they want to, they could play a bajillion threes if they want to, but they're just gonna keep it a little bit simple and just play two fours. In a climbing shedding fashion, if it's led a certain meld, you have to follow that meld or play a single. So the interesting thing, you might be wondering, oh, or play a single. You don't have to beat the previous played thing. So in this case, these are two fours. So blue, if they want to, they can play higher two fours, which would be stronger because there's more cards, or three twos, which would also be higher because it is more number of cards. And the peacock over here, if they wanted to, they could just play a single. So maybe they play a five. And then the castle, I don't know what that is, <laughs> uh, could also play. But again, since it was sets, they have to play either a set or a single. And so maybe they play two fives. So now after everyone's played, again, you can just play whatever you want, you're going to rank players on how strong they play. So you first look at number of cards. So blue over here played the strongest. They're gonna take the highest point value, flip it face down, that's gonna be in their score pile for the game. Now, the next player would be the two fives here, because even though these were the same number of cards, fives beat fours, they're gonna take the five there, Ponytail is gonna take the two, and the final one goes to the peacock. So now everyone has kind of scored that original set. But here is the fascinating thing about Rainbow, is the cards played now go into the center to be used for scoring for the next trick. And how it works is, you first are gonna pair up all the numbers in their own pairs, and then any leftovers are just singles. And so if there was like another five, for example, we would pair that five up, and then you then rank them by combined numbers. So you have a 10 here, an eight here, a four here, a five here, so it's actually gonna go here, and a two here. And after you've ranked everything, so this could be pretty big, could be pretty small, like if everyone plays singles, it'll only be four cards, right? You can kind of have a fluctuating size market. You are then going to remove anything more than the player count. So one, two, three, four. So this two is actually just gonna go away. And then the winner of the trick, Blue, who played the three twos, is then gonna lead to the next trick. The other thing you can play are runs. So maybe they play a run of one, two, three, four, 
five, six, like a huge run. So now it's must follow on runs. Again, you can just play a single. So maybe the peacock plays that too. Coming over to the castle here, maybe they play just kind of a shorter run and then Ponyta down here plays. They actually don't have any runs. They just have ones, threes, and sixes. So you may be forced to play a single, right? Like in that example. So then again, you're gonna rank players. So this player played the strongest. So blue is going to, maybe they really wanted blues because it's blueberries. Uh, they're gonna take these two. So that's 10 points for them. And then it's gonna come up here. So that's eight points for them, five points for them. And then blue or ponytail down here is gonna get four points. So then again, you're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna pair things up. As you can see, things are paired in interesting ways here. And then you're gonna rank them. So you got 12, 10, four and four are just gonna be next to each other and three and two. Notice we only can have space for those four spots. So these three cards are going to get discarded and then we're gonna keep playing. So last thing that you could lead is just a single. So if you lead a single, it's actually ambiguous what is the must follow and it will continue that way until someone sets it. So if someone like the peacock could play another single coming to the castle here, it's still ambiguous, so they can do whatever they want, but the second they set it, so maybe they say it's a run, now it has to be a run. Uh, which, if you remember, Ponyta's hand was not the best for runs, so they're like, darn it. But they can play this. Ooh, if they play the three, I should explain, ties, so in this case, go to the star player. So they wouldn't want to play the three, maybe they do play that six. And then again, you would do the same thing. So the strongest person gets that, second strongest gets this, then blue, and then peacock. But now, as you can see, it's, it's a 12, a five, a two, and a three. So the wild part about this is like the point disparance, disparance, that's not a word, disparity? The point disparity can change as you play. So that's pretty much the game. You will play different sets as a lead. So it could be sets or different combos as a lead. So different sets, straights, runs, right? Or a single, which would be ambiguous until someone plays. And you can play all singles, right? If everyone led a single, then it's just highest single, right? So if Ponyta started the lead, it would be Peacock first, then Ponyta, then Blue, then the castle in this wild example here. Small thing to note, you can't pass, so you must play. So another kind of slight difference from maybe a climbing shooting game. So play like this is gonna continue until two players are out. If one player's out, you keep playing and you just skip their turn. But if two players are out, you stop immediately. So there's a little bit of like player defined end of hand in an interesting way. And then you're just gonna flip over your score pile and see how much you score. And then it's just a one hand game. So whoever scores the most in that one hand wins. It's so like Ponyta at the end here at 15 plus six, 21, 24, 26, uh, maybe, you know, compared to the 25 that the castle had. And yeah, they would win. And if it's a tie, it's shared victory. And that's how to play Rainbow. The deck in Prey is a little wild. So it's four suits, but the cards are dual. So there will be a number on one side and then another number on the other side. It's one through 12. But again, as you can see here, the cards have another number once you flip it, which will make sense in the gameplay. Here we have the game set up for four players. So no matter the player count, you're gonna deal 12 cards to each player. Also, everyone's gonna get this card here, which is gonna hold their dice. Also keep track of how many points they have in the game. And everyone is going to get two dice in their color. Before the trick play, everyone is going to roll their dice. If they get doubles like this, even though that is a perfect roll, they will have to re-roll until they do not get doubles. Then players are going to put their dice onto their spot here. And then the first person that leads into the first trick is going to the person who rolled the lowest. Over here, it's hard to see, but the yellow rolled a two and a one. So how the game works is players are going to look at their hand and they're gonna make sure that all the cards are flipped to their predator side, the bigger side, the one that kind of has two numbers in a way. And they're going to play six tricks with the predator side face up and then after those six tricks, they're gonna flip their hand and they're gonna play the final six tricks of the hand with the other side. The goal is players are trying to hit one of the two numbers in their bid. So as you can see, this Nana five over here is trying to get either one trick or four tricks. Up here, this one has a five and a four, so they just wanna get five and a four. What's interesting is if you roll a six, you can get either six tricks or zero. So if this was the case with the one and the six, it's zero would do it, one would do it, and six would do it. 
If you get it successfully at the end of the round, you're just gonna flip your card. So this is one point. If you do that again in a later round, you've done it. You're just trying to get to two points. So going back here, settling that. So again, the person with the lowest is gonna lead. If it was tied, you would look at the lowest die. So like if two people had fives and it was a four, one and a two, three, you would do the person with the four, one. And if that's tied, like if yellow wasn't here and there's a four, one, four, one, just do it randomly. <laughs> uh, so yellow is going to lead. It is a must follow game and highest of the lead suit is gonna win. So maybe they want to get their one or two tricks in early because they play the highest of the red suit. Coming over to this player here, I'm gonna flip it so their predators are face up. Must follow, so they're gonna play that. The pig is going to play that. And then the lion, Claude, is going to play that. So again, you would just capture the trick, lead to the next trick, and Flick like this is gonna continue, so let's pretend that one, two, three, four, five tricks have just happened. Let's say they just took that six trick. Once players have six cards left, they are going to flip their hand, and their hand is gonna to change to the opposite side number, and then they're gonna keep playing. So the person who won the trick, like let's say it was this person, would then just keep playing. So then they lead with maybe the three, and then that is again still, whoop, gotta flip your hand, uh, is gonna be the lead suit, and you're gonna keep playing from there. So at the end of the 12 tricks, you're gonna see if anyone hit their bid. Uh, and again, it has to be exactly, so one or four, or in this case, one or two, four or five. And if they do, they'll flip. You're gonna just shuffle and deal, and you're gonna keep going until someone hits two. If multiple people hit two on the same round, then it's a shared victory, and that is how to play Prey. Hey, Rat Tail Reiner here with final thoughts for Prey and Rainbow. Please take everything I say with a grain of salt because I design, develop, play tests, make videos for all play this. So this is huge, 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 huge grain of salt that even provided these copies. So take that with another two big helpings of grains of salt. These are in their tiny box lines. Small, tiny, art by side, Beppu. Let's maybe we cut off this rat tail and then let's get into final thoughts. Four, let's start with Prey. Ah, okay. Now that that is done, Prey. This used to be double side play. And not only does it now have amazing side Beppu art, but it is in this super small form. And you know what, let's open this. This was before I taught you how to play. So just one second. I might need to use these scissors again. Hey, Taylor here, no more rat tail Reiner. We fired him. He uh, was asleep on the job. We are back to cover final thoughts for Rainbow and Prey. And again, huge, grain of salt, huge, huge, huge grain of salt. Work for all play, I do design and development for them and also they provided these copies. And also Sai Beppu is a pal, so, oh, maybe that's the first thing we should talk about, is look at these covers. She also did Fairy and Panda Panda and there's some more coming out and all play has this tiny box line of just these amazing Sai Beppu art. As you may be aware, fans of the channel, I have uh, Of What's Left in short Zoot Suit by uh, uh, Sai with the wonderful art from Sai and I'm just, I've been a, such a fan for so long. I absolutely love her art style. I think Fairy is one of my favorites by her and these are also amazing and it's so cool to see the just the diversity of her art. Like it's, it's so cool to see her do this style which I think is kind of like uh, Aztec animal, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then this one, which is just like cute little uh, unicorns and fruit. Just just amazing, absolutely amazing. So let's talk about Prey first. So Prey is fascinating to me because it is, is one of the quickest teach trick-taking games. It's up there with Boast or Nothing for what I think is an amazing trick-taking game to teach to people because it teaches you exact hitting an exact number, but you don't have to bid because it forces you in the dice to bid. It's super quick, it's super clean, it's super crisp. It gives you agency with your hand in a way, in a cool way. 
Uh, so there's a fun twist in the gameplay, fun twist in the scoring, in a, in a way. Like, it's a quick scoring, right? Uh, I guess what I meant is, like, fun twist in the goal. The scoring is actually, like, pretty basic. It's, like, one of the most basic scorings ever. But this is just such a breezy, fun, amazing, intro trick-taking game that I have, especially the form factor, have been using to show people uh, uh, trick-taking games. Uh, Boast or Nothing, I still does, this does a wonderful job of teaching Trump. I think that's a really important thing when you teach players. But this is like baby's first bid. It's so good. It's so helpful because it teaches you like, hey, if you happen to bid that way, how would you like maybe tactically hit that bid, right? Really cool concepts. Uh, I love, I mean, yeah, there's no Trump, but I love the fact that the must follow is clean. It's also gorgeous production, so it could bring people in that way. I played, so I, I had double side play, and I played a variant where you rolled three dice, and doubles were okay. And how it, what, how it worked was, if you hit a bit on your dice, you actually removed them, and then you would roll fewer dice next round. So if you got doubles, or if you got triples, because you had three of them, players would really try to stop you from <laughs> essentially like removing two of those dice, because those were like your life in a way, but you want to get rid of life. <laughs> I don't know if life is the right <laughs> word for it. But it's cool that this system had a really fun variant, like we've been playing that very for, for a bit. So I've, I've liked double side play, I've liked Prey for a while now, so it's just so awesome that it's in this wonderful package with, again, amazing side Babu art, and super clean rules, tiny form factor, and it's great. Praise, praise, praise a hoot, praise a... Uh, an absolute hoot. Now, moving on to Rainbow. This was one that I hadn't played. Uh, this was Neon, I believe. Kind of like an older-ish game. I mean, old in quotes, right? But in terms of like, very close to the new. Definitely a little bit older. Talk about clean. Ten copies of each, one through six. Again, the side of art is absolutely gorgeous, and it makes a picture which I absolutely adore. Like, look at that the five to the six, and if you go all the way through, it makes like a wonderful little panorama of this arch, this rainbow arch. Side just absolutely killed it. I think uh, a wonderful highlight is like the three has little sneakers on the unicorn with little bows. Just amazing. So, gameplay though, I think there are a lot of subtle, slight, clever things that are going on in this game. What you add and what you play previously to the trick is what you're fighting over later. And there's some cool moves that you can do where maybe you don't really care about the current trick, but you know the next trick is gonna go crazy for you. Maybe play a single six. Hmm? Kind of an interesting idea. Maybe play a pair of sixes. You know, guaranteed that there's a 12 in there for you. Some really interesting things that you can set up for the next round. I do think Higher player counts, are, yeah, this is a little loose just because so much can go around the table. But I think four, maybe even three, I think I like four more because it's a little more um, perfect information. I don't know if that quite matters in this game. But uh, th there's a nice pace of the game where if you know you're good in sets or if you know you're good in runs, that's like kind of when you, it's like, it's a game all about when you kind of just go for it because it is a one hand game when someone's out, it's out. I play with those players who just go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, and they're out really quick. And if two players do that, then the game ends really quick. It's really fascinating. It's like this uh, kind of game of chicken. And if two players are super aggressive, then it works out for both both of them, right? Because they're using their cards aggressively and like quickly, whereas everyone's a little timid. But if one person doesn't do that, of the two that are going wild, like if only one person does the wildness, then that person who is aggressive actually is forced to sit for a while. So there's a really cool tension of like the push and pull. I love player defined um, game states, if that makes sense. Like I love when players can choose how long a hand is, like kind of what the game length can be in an interesting way, like food chain magnate, or uh, I did that in short zoot suit, like players are the ones that are at the kind of like the driving or the driver's seat. And, and I love that in rainbow. So it's, it's, Player defined scoring, player defined end of hand. So there's a lot of really interesting subtle control that you can have in the game that I really like. And also, it's cool to have a climbing shedding game that like climbing, 
is important for getting points, but like you don't really have to climb. Also it has that ambiente where you can choose like what the meld is later if someone leads a single. And then also th that like looseness of like, there's really only three combos and one of them is like a single. That makes this really approachable, but also has like a little bit under the curtain, right? Super simple. Like I think these both these games are just like super simple, but that just enough under the curtain that appeases those, oh, I don't know what to call it, hardcore <laughs> gamers. I don't know what that's right. I don't think that's the right word. But like those people who want a little bit more meat on the bone maybe. I think both of these are a hoot. Absolutely a hoot. I don't think you can go wrong with either, especially because it's so small, so so cheap, so um, such a tight package and such a lovely, gorgeous package. I'm gushing. Not gonna give these a seal because I am too biased at, at this point. Uh, don't even know if they, they would. I'm just not even gonna <laughs> uh, get anywhere near that because, again, this is so fraught. This is so fraught. I just, I just, I just love Sai Beppu and, and uh, just to see this line that has so much of her art in these also good games just makes me so happy. So, a little gush or two for you. Um, definitely check them out. I hope that they continue this wonderful line. I just, the world needs more Sai Beppu art. Please make it forever Sai. <laughs> or not, or stop when you want. No pressure, you're just amazing. Okay, so that is uh, Prey and Rainbow. Whew, what a wild time. Gen Con was a wild, 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 wild time, as you can see by the less hair that I have. It was a hoot, it was a success. Um, I should probably do a Gen Con wrap up. It was, it was wild. I played a ton of games. I saw a lot of games coming out that were absolutely wonderful. I think there's a lot of fun, exciting things coming out in the trick-taking climbing shooting space. So I cannot wait. I think the rest of this year and the start of next year and the future is very bright and very exciting. So can't wait to talk about it. Thanks so much for watching. D signing off. No hair tailor. All right, bye. <laughs>